when you sow, whether it's in the spirit or in the flesh, the only person that can see that is God. Mm -hmm. Because you can do these behind closed doors. People don't know what you are doing. But what people can see is the product of what you're doing. Yeah. So in the moment of sowing, is between you and God. Mm -hmm. And that can be hidden. But when it comes to reaping, that's not only before God, it's also public. People can actually see what God is producing in your life if you are sowing in the Spirit. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King Podcast. This is part three. Part three. We have our traditional fist bump. There. We do. <laughs> so we've done part one on walking in the Spirit. Please, if you haven't watched it, go and do so. Part two was on the fruit of the Spirit, not fruits of the Spirit. Fruit. And part three, we're going to be speaking about in the beginning of Galatians chapter six, in regards to sowing and reaping, mm -hmm. right? Sowing in the flesh or sowing in the spirit and reaping, reaping. and sowing, uh, sorry, reaping in the flesh or the spirit. So a lot of people would change the meaning to that mm -hmm. into what really suits them, right? Some people might even encourage or not i wouldn't say encourage i would say more deceive someone to give more into the church mm. to reap more from this passage from this passage right um so they will be like oh the more you give the more god's gonna give you back come on guys so, do better. <laughs> yeah so please context is really key <laughs> when, when it comes to the bible but we really want to dive in in the context of part one and part two, mm -hmm. how we're walking in the spirit and how we're producing a fruit into sowing and reaping because it's still, Paul is still using the same language, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Still using... He's on the same yeah, argument. Agricultural, the same, yeah, agricultural. Yeah. 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 yeah, the whole thing in the book of Galatians is all relating to that main thesis, that main thing, that, that the main arc of the narrative of Galatia um, is we're living in the spirit, not under the law. We're living in the spirit, not in the flesh, right? And so what we need to do is we need to go to that main source. And we kind of touched on this in the second one where we're talking about the fruit singular because it's one tree, it's one source, and that fruit is of the same essence and same character and nature of Christ. And so when we're looking at these things from a meta-narrative and from Paul's argumentation and what he's saying, it's very clear that we're not looking at this in a carnal way and we're not talking about look, looking at this in a in a fleshly way we need to look at it with the mind of Christ with the mind of God amen uh, that, that's really good so if you are sowing in the spirit what would the product be yeah. what does Paul tell us in Galatians chapter 6 if we sow in the spirit um i want to answer that with a with a small story all right I remember in uh, my early days coming to Christ, maybe I was like maybe two years in, and we were in the church that, you know, my dad started a few years earlier, and there were two people, and they became believers at the same time. Like within a month of each other, they both became believers, all right? And they became believers now five, six years down the track. One of them just flew, like... Mm on eagle's wings all the way into the spirit. Like the guy went from a babe to a fully mature adult in those five years, doing amazing things for God, going into the mission field, teaching the word, preaching the word with boldness, full of the spirit. The other one was right where she was when she was first started. And that person, she came to me angry one day. Why? This person who was born, like spiritually born in the same time I was, why is he all the way here and I'm still stuck where I was? Mm. And I go, this guy invested. He sowed in the spirit. He denied his flesh. He denied the things that brought him joy in the flesh, but he was sowing in the spirit and that gave him something more greater and he's doing greater work. You, on the other hand, 
You didn't. You didn't devote yourself to scripture. You didn't devote yourself to prayer. You didn't devote yourself to discipleship. You didn't devote yourself to, you know, the local church and where your gifts are. You devoted yourself to fleshly things. Wow, that's good. Uh, and I think that's a misconception here because sometimes we think that the way we grow in the spirit is the same way we naturally grow mm. as a human being, right? Like, for example, I don't have a choice for tomorrow for me to be a day older, mm -hmm. right? I don't have a choice for in 10 years, yeah. I'll be from 35 to 45. Yeah, yeah. That there is no option of that. And, and people think or assume that because you're a Christian, you naturally grow. No. So every year you're spiritually more mature. And that's not the case. No, it's an active participation. It's an active growth where you have to work at it. It's it's more in line of exercise rather than just the natural growth of a human. Mm. Like in order to gain muscle, you got to really train. In order to be better an athlete, you got to really train daily at it, mm. right? And so this is where we look at it in the spiritual realm. Um, Paul kind of uses the analogy of the physical, but he says the physical, there's a discipline there in order to attain a goal. And it's the same thing in the spiritual right but it's greater and more important where there's a goal the goal is conformity to the image of christ mm. the goal is to display the character and nature of christ the goal is to glorify christ that's the goal Amen. right the process to that goal is very active it's a mm. daily denial those who want to be my disciple must deny themselves Take up the cross and follow me. Yeah. Right? You want to be like Christ, you need the cross. Mm. You want to be like Christ, you need the denial of the flesh. Yeah. You want to be like Christ, you need to put in subjugation and in dominion the things and the desires of the flesh. And this is what sometimes we just don't get. We're very comfortable and very used to doing things in the flesh. Yeah. And so it, it takes us out of our comfort zone and it kind of hurts and it's uncomfortable in the flesh to say, I don't want this anymore. I want this. I want the spiritual goal. I want this spiritual stuff that Christ had. And so there's this, it's like daily. And you look at it like these daily decisions in your sanctification lead to a greater goal. So you'll see in the five years, those who are, you know, reborn in the spirit at the same time, you'll see five years down the track how much they've invested. Like, we'll, we'll read this passage here. Galatians 6, verse 6 to 10 says, The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Now, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in the due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. Going back to the Corinthian church, Paul touches on this. He says, I cannot speak to you as though you are spiritual, you are carnal. Mm -hmm. right? I should be able to speak to you as someone who has fully grown, but you are carnal. You have sowed in the flesh, and now you are reaping that corruption in the flesh in the midst of the church. It's very similar to what he's saying individually for each of the believers here. What you are sowing in the Spirit, in your discipline, in your devotion in the Word of God, in your devotion to, to the destruction of the desires of the flesh, in your devotion to the seeking of the things of God, in your devotion to seeking the the needs of others rather than yourself and in your devotion to selflessness and and godliness right yeah. in that devotion and in that discipline you will see growth mm. you will see the reaping of what you are sowing yeah and and i think a lot of people do get discouraged here mm. because we spoke about the discomfort of mm -hmm. doing these things in the spirit and sowing is part of you taking a seed and burying it into the ground. There is nothing comfortable about that. No. And there is nothing um, joyful about that, right? In the sense that you're burying something. Mm -hmm. But the sense is we bury something with an expectation. Yes. When you spoke about the end goal, 
all, the reason why we do these things in the spirit now is because we believe in the end goal. And that is a process of hope, right? It's an act of hope where you are sowing in the spirit and you know that what you're going to reap from it is what God has for you. And that as Christians, we should be faithful in mm. it. We actually should be faithful in it, even if we don't see results. Because when you put a seed, uh, for example, if someone w comes to a ground, walks away for five minutes, and someone else comes, puts a seed in the ground, and covers it, and that person comes back, he looks at the ground, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. There is no, no progress here. Yeah. And sometimes while you're sowing in the spirit, people will come in and out of your life and be like, I don't see anything in yeah. this person's yeah. life. But they don't recognize that what you're doing is for the future hope that when the t right time comes, you'll start to see the plant, you'll start to see the tree, mm. you'll start to see the fruit, and you can enjoy the fruit of your labor. Then people can look and be like, wait, what happened to that mm. person? Mm -hmm. Often, sometimes people will can criticize you in regards to that, but we're not here thinking about what people think about us. Yeah, it's what we want to do before God. Yeah. God, sorry, no, 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 no. Uh, and I'll be quick about it. When you saw, whether it's in the spirit or in the flesh, the only person that can see that is God, mm -hmm. because you can do these behind closed doors. People don't know what you are doing. But what people can see is the product of what you're doing. Yeah. So in the moment of sowing, it's between you and God. Mm -hmm. And that can be hidden. But when it comes to reaping, that's not only before God. It's also public. People can actually see what God is producing in your life if you are sowing in the Spirit. Now, often people don't want to sow in the mm -hmm. Spirit. Some people are content with sowing in the flesh. Yeah. But notice here... What you sow, you reap. If you're sowing in the spirit, you're getting life. If you're sowing in the flesh, you're getting destruction. Mm -hmm. Now, what Christians often do is they sow in the flesh and they expect to reap in the spirit. And they complain to God and say, God, what's going on? Mm -hmm. This this is crazy. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. Life is too hard or things are coming my way that I did not expect. Yeah. And God's like, well, what what, what was the seed that you put exactly. in? Exactly. Exactly. So we can't pretend to put a seed that is filthy and that would produce thorns in our lives, for example. Not that I know seeds come, uh, thorns come <laughs> from seeds, but it's just examples that... Well, you you can't expect to put a seed and expect something good to come out of mm. it. But if you are faithful to the Lord and you say, Lord, I just want to sow what you give me. Yeah. And those seeds come from God. You can't sow in the spirit because it's something that's outside of us. Yeah, I think. And as well, the element here that Christians need to be aware of is the element of faith here, because. One of the things that contrasts the works of the flesh and the work, the walking in the spirit, the contrasting thing is what you are seeing and what you are feeling in the moment, in the present. Everything in the flesh you are seeing and you are feeling and you're witnessing in the moment. So like it's very visible, right? So for example, you work, you receive a wage, right? You can see on a daily basis that I'm working, I'm receiving a wage. You don't see on a daily basis what my spiritual discipline is resulting in. That comes later, right? Yes. So when we look at Hebrews 11, for example, the definition of faith, we are looking at faith being the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. right? You don't see it in the moment. You will see it later. So you need to have this faith in this element of, I don't know, I, I can't see now where this is leading, but I know it's leading to righteousness. I know it's leading to goodness. And I know it's leading to something I will need later on, mm. right? And so you're talking about these trials and these sufferings in life that if we have been very spiritual, dis spiritually disciplined and if we have been spending time in the presence of God and dwelling richly in His Word and allowing that to dwell in us, and if we have been cultivating the Spirit in us, 
in fellowship with the Spirit of God, when these things happen, when all things in the world go to, like, you know, when, when they crash, we have the spiritual result of that discipline. We have the peace and the joy and the love. And, and in the midst of those, those horrific things, the Spirit takes over, right? Mm -hmm. And our spiritual life is at a point where we can handle these things. Whereas if you've been sowing in the flesh, you can't handle it. It's almost like you're going to give up. Where people are like, you know what, I think I'm done here. I'm done with this gospel. I'm done with this. Because you've been sowing in the flesh for so long that you don't have the spiritual resource to tackle this. Yeah, And that's a dangerous place to be. And this is why we encourage. And, and Paul is very serious about this. Peter is very serious about having this mind of Christ and having this spiritual discipline and, and running as though you are running towards a goal. Because if you don't, there are some real dangers here. There are some very real dangers where when things happen, when Satan attacks, when the flesh attacks, you won't have anything to stand on. Yeah, and, and that's pretty important, man, when it comes to accountability. Mm. That the more you continue in sowing in the flesh, that seed might be easy to pick up from the ground or it might have a little plant and you can pluck it out. But the more you leave it there, and water it, it becomes a tree, and and the roots become deeper and deeper into your life, that it's no longer becomes, it feels like no longer becomes a choice mm -hmm. of uprooting it. It becomes so difficult to deal with these issues in your life that you've let go for years yeah. and years and years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why we're encouraging you, whatever you've sowed in the flesh previously, just let the Lord to come and clean that, mm -hmm. right? You know, like when you have a tree next to your house and the roots are affecting the foundations mm -hmm. of your house, yeah. you're like, I, got, I gotta call the council. <laughs> I gotta call someone to come and get rid of this tree because that tree has been left there for so long yeah. in yeah. my backyard, front yard, that the roots are starting to affect my very foundations mm -hmm. of my house. Mm -hmm. So I need to, to bring someone to uproot it. Yeah. We need to call Christ. When it comes to these really difficult times where we're like, Lord, we were so negligent. We've let this tree of the flesh grow, yeah. grow and grow and grow. And it has affected my foundations in you. Mm -hmm. I need to restore my foundations in you. Yeah. I want you to come and fix that problem. But the issue is here. Sometimes we bring the Lord to our lives and say, please, please. Don't take it from the root. Yeah, yeah. Just shorten the tree. Or, or you know, cut, uh, you, you can cut all these other ones. Just that one there, please just leave. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm going to yeah. tell you, the only person that you're deceiving is yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you, the only person that you're deceiving is yourself. The more you let these things grow and allow the devil to come and water them in, into your place, the more you're going to have problems in life. Yeah. That's why it says that the the sowing of the flesh is destruction. Like what you're reaping is yeah. not something that anyone would want to desire in their life. Yeah. No one would want to say, you know what? I love some destruction in my life. No, no. <laughs> no one wants that. We don't want to live in chaos. We want to live in peace. Yeah. Yeah. I I love the analogy um, of the book of Hebrews. It's one of the greatest in this regard. It talks about um, not being invested and not living in sexual immorality or in, in unrighteousness like Esau, who he traded his birthright for a bowl of stew, right? So he had this choice between a spiritual inheritance and something physical that would gratify his flesh. So he had this opportunity to sow in something. And he sowed in the flesh and gave up his birthright. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians do this because they see that, okay, well, look, there is this physical thing I can have right now, but I'll have to give up something spiritual for it. I have to give up a, a spiritual blessing that God has given me in order for that. Right, And that's why sometimes when we indulge in the present sin that is before us and, and you know, it's going to give me that, temporary joy and happiness right now if I just do it and you give up something spiritual here you give up that joy you give up that peace that that is just inherent in godliness right and so 
the the book of Hebrews like don't be like Esau don't be like the children of Israel who turned back even though God blessed them you know we are not of those who turn back we are not of those who fall back we are not of those who are sowing in the flesh we are those of the spirit we have a different nature and so we ought not look at the things of the flesh and say that's going to give me joy because we know better than that I mean, where has your joy come from our joy and like my lasting joy and the greatest moments in my life have not been in the things of the flesh ever. You know, I've had moments where my bank account was full and I was more depressed than ever. Mm. Then I've had moments where I had nothing in the bank. I had God himself and I was just so satisfied, you know. Mm. And so sowing and reaping is this very real, it's, it's a reality in our lives with the two natures warring within us. But this this fleshly nature it bears nothing good but destruction. The spiritual nature bears everything good, but it doesn't appease the things of the flesh. So when people look at you, they might look at you as a loser in the world sense, but man, are you a winner in Christ, right? Yeah, that's important because if we're not too careful, we're going to be letting birds and worms come into the tree that we've invested so much in the spirit and you start it you start to see the worms eating the fruit. Mm -hmm. And after a certain time, you look at that and you're like, that's that's not what I've put so much time into. Yeah. So I just encourage you that as you're sowing in the spirit, it takes a very long time to see results. It takes a lot of a lot of hard work as well to maintain what God has blessed you with. Don't let that go for a bowl of soup, mm -hmm. as we can see. Come on, Esau. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed these three parts. If that's something that you want to see more of in regards to seeing maybe like a two or three part series, please let us know and let us know after all these three videos, what kind of touched you the most? Mm -hmm. what, what's something that might have changed your opinion on? And hopefully you've been encouraged. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bless you all.